Um, I mean, this is a tough. This is a tough one to swallow, man. You know, I I expected the Bucks to be in the NBA Finals this year. I really did. Um, I thought this was the year they're gonna get a chip, especially with with how weird the uh, the season is and um, with COVID happening and everything in the break. I thought the break would benefit the Bucks a lot because before the break happened, you gotta remember the Bucks were struggling a bit. Giannis got hurt. I figured the time off would be good for him, and Giannis will heal up, and I think they'll get back to you know being the Bucks and winning a series. Um, and, and, you know, just winning the East, basically. You know, I didn't think the East was that strong this year outside of the Heat. Obviously, the ball, obviously, obviously Boston and uh, Toronto um, are pretty good. But outside of that, I don't think the East was that strong. Not as deep as the West is or has been. Um, this is just a shock. This is just a shock. And I, I, I to me... It sucks, man, because you know what, dude? Like, this is a team. For me, at least my journey with this team is when I became, when, when I started rooting for the Bucks, man, it was back in like 2001 or 2000. One of those, either one of those years, it doesn't matter. That was uh, Sam Cassell, Big Dog, Ray Allen, those guys. Um, I rooted for that team then, you know, and I was living in Florida at the time. Um, and that was the closest we got to a championship at that point. And then we lost to Allen Iverson at Eastern Conference Finals, which that Eastern Conference Finals was amazing. I think it went seven games. I think Allen Iverson took it. And then, you know, two years later, you know, they go and break my heart with selling Ray, trading Ray Allen to... Philadelphia, I mean, not Philadelphia, I was, God, my God, to uh, Seattle for Gary Payton. And at that point, I literally quit on the team. I said, this team will never ever win a championship. This team will never get a superstar. This team will never get anywhere. And from 2001 till now, I mean, we've had a lot of bad years. Uh, it's, it's a two-part thing. It's, it's the fact that nobody wants to come here and play because, you know, Milwaukee's not the sexiest destination to be. When you're making a lot of money, when you're a millionaire, when you're a billionaire, when you're you know when you're making a lot of money, you don't want to live here in Milwaukee. You don't. I mean, that's just reality. Um, and it it's hard to get players here. And within, within the past like seven years, we've been getting players here. You know, and I mean, you can start with the whole Greg Monroe thing. Granted, it didn't pan out well, but you know what? That was something, right? You don't get it, drafting Giannis and him turning into a superstar, but you gotta understand, like the Bucks didn't have a superstar from two thousand two till two thousand. I would say fifteen when they started considering Giannis a superstar. So you gotta figure thirteen years it took to get to Giannis becoming a superstar, close to it, and then till now, right? And they lose to the Miami Heat in five games in the second round of the playoffs. And Giannis is, next year is in a contract year. And it sucks. It doesn't feel good at all. It does not feel good at all um, because I feel like this is the beginning of the end. And I don't want it to be. I want to be wrong, right? I want to be wrong. I don't think I'm wrong on this one. I think this is the beginning of the end because I've seen this story play out way too many times in the NBA where a superstar comes in they do everything they can. They get told they can't win here because they're a mid-market team. And they go into that next year. They don't sign the extension. And you lose them for nothing. Um, it sucks, man. And now I know how a Cleveland Cavaliers fan felt. At the end, when LeBron lost to Boston in that tragic series he had. 
Now I know what that feels like, and it sucks. It's not good. It doesn't feel good at all. You know, I love basketball, right? I love. Oh shit! What's up, Warren? How you doing, man? Sorry, I'm going. I'm 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 talking right now. How you doing, bro? Welcome to the stream, bro. If you want to join in and talk to me, man, uh, message me your Discord. DM me your Discord, and um, I can get you right here, and uh, we can get you uh, get your thoughts out in the series and everything that I'm talking about or whatever. Uh, but DM me your Discord name. And uh, I can get you on here, man, and we can uh, get your thoughts if you like. But hey, man, welcome to the stream. Sorry about that. I'm just going on, uh, just, just talking, right? I'm just talking. Um, or was I? But yeah, man, I finally know what a, a Cavalier fan feels after that Boston series, and it sucks. It's not a good feeling. Um, I'll say this right now, right? There is a chance we can keep Giannis here, but the thing is we need ownership to do something this offseason. Oh, you tuned in. Nice, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Tell Mike. Tell Mike's bitch at. You know what? Do me a favor. You know what? I'm getting hot right now. Hold on a minute. Tell Mike to join this stream. He will literally. He posted. On my face, on my timeline, th with, 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 within your face. Where's Mike? He has the time to do that. Tell him to join my live stream right now. Tell him to tune in. Mike is such a... Let me tell you something right now. I respect Mike. I respect how I respect how slimy he is, okay? And how he operates. I respect it. He'll go out of nowhere and say, in your face, I don't know where my timeline is. It won't show up ever again. He, by the way, he, Mike, he's, he's one of my best friend's brothers. Uh, good friend of mine. Competitive. We just talk shit back and forth. He just he just randomly just... Whatever. He in-your-faced me basically on my timeline after the Heat won, by the way. Which I'm not a fan of. What a jerk. He does that, he leaves, and then doesn't come back. What? Come on. I bet he won't show up in this live stream and talk shit. I bet he won't. I bet he won't. But anyway, uh, anyway, back to this. Sorry, I had to do that. A little entertainment there. Uh, right now, okay, so right now where my head's at. There, I looked at the free agent market yesterday. Okay, I looked at the free agent market. Uh, no, not yesterday. But a, uh, about a week ago with, with uh, my buddy Danny and everything. And I was in another stream talking about it. There's not a lot the Bucks can do do in free agency right now and that's what's scary the only thing i could see them doing to bolster the bench is maybe picking up an austin rivers and from there it comes down to who can you get in trades right now to keep Giannis here in milwaukee that's the goal we need to get past the eastern conference okay I already said it on Facebook, okay, and I'm a man of my word. I, just, I, I stand by what I said. This is the worst loss in an Eastern Conference by a team led by a superstar. And I mean because the reason why I put Giannis at that level is because LeBron James was in the Eastern Conference playoffs and dominating for so long with Ter with not really good teams. Let's just be honest. The Eastern Conference, when it comes to teams, they're not. It's not good. Outside of the top three or four, they're not good. Okay. LeBron dominated this conference, so I gotta go off that spectrum, right? Because LeBron was here. I mean, Giannis is probably the best player in the Eastern Conference. Tell me if I'm wrong. Giannis is the best player in the Eastern Conference, hands down. So when I see a loss like this in five games. Let's put it like this. LeBron lost, I believe, hey, Oren, correct me if I'm wrong. LeBron, I think, lost in six games to the Boston Celtics, right, before he left Cleveland. Can you, can you look that up for me right quick? I think he lost in six to the Boston Celtics before he left for Miami. Correct me if I'm wrong in there. Whoever's in the chat, look that up for me. Because I think, I think he lost in six. But I'll take losing in six to the Boston Celtics over losing in five to the Miami Heat. Reason being, yes, the Miami Heat have a lot of great players, but they're not KG, Ray Allen, Paul Pierce, right? 
So, in my opinion, for a team led by a, a superstar caliber like Giannis, this is the probably the biggest upset or one of the worst losses I've seen for a team like that ever. And I mean, LeBron didn't even lose like that when he was on his come up in the playoffs. Because you got to remember, right? The first year LeBron got into the playoffs, he missed his first two seasons. He came in a third season, got to the second round. I believe lost in six to the Detroit Pistons. Remember, the Detroit Pistons were the cream of the crop of the Eastern Conference. Right? And then that next year went to the finals. As much shit talk as I have for LeBron James, and it's more of me, a tongue-in-cheek kind of thing. Yeah, it was six games. Boston won in 2010. Yeah, that's what I figured. It was six games. See what I'm saying? That's six games. That's respectable. This is in five to a Heat team led by a respectable Jimmy Butler. I'm not, I'm not saying that they're not good. What I'm saying is they're not up to that level of Boston was. So I can't remember the last time LeBron lost like that. In a playoffs in the Eastern Conference. I just don't. I can't remember the last. The only time LeBron gets swept in the playoffs is when it's in the finals. Okay. Um. Granted, we didn't have Giannis for... And he was hurt. But still. Um. You know. Hey, you know what? The only bright side I take from tonight is... And I didn't watch tonight's game. If you didn't catch, my, catch me earlier. Tonight I was out doing jujitsu. Fluid jiu-jitsu here, by the way. Um, I was out doing jiu-jitsu and uh, Muay Thai tonight. I just wanted to train tonight, uh, you know. Um, just I just wanted to train, you know. I didn't want to watch the game tonight at all. I mean, I, I kind of figured the Bucks were going to lose this one. If they won it, I'd be very surprised. Go to six games. Um, but, yeah, I mean, this is, this is a bad one. This is a really bad one. Uh, and I'm fearful Giannis is going to be gone, and it sucks. It sucks, man. I mean, Wisconsin can't win a championship outside of the Packers, and the Packers haven't won a Super Bowl in 10 years. It sucks. It's not good. It's not a good feeling. It sucks. And this is the other problem. This is the other thing I'm going to get into, too. The reason why I have not been... Super excited about the NBA over the past 10 years or so. And everybody knows. People who know me closely understand my frustration with the NBA. My frustration with the NBA is is that I feel like 30 team. I, 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 would, I feel like maybe 60 to 70% of the teams are farm systems. And the rest is just sitting around and waiting to pick up and, and pick up and pick off superstars. Because I mean, I mean, think about it. I mean, I, I, here's the, here's the thing. This is this is the. By the way, this is the recipe. Okay, this is not the recipe. I'm sorry. This is this is how you get superstars to leave mid market teams. Pay attention to the trend. Giannis, superstar, shows up Milwaukee mid market team, plays well, becomes superstar. Okay, gets to the playoffs, makes a splash. Oh, cool. He's you know he's won in a couple series every now and then. Last year, Eastern Conference Finals. Okay, cool. He loses the six to Toronto and Kawhi. All right, cool. That next year, all of a sudden, now we're getting to the magic number of Giannis's contract is up. What does the media do? Oh, I can see Giannis in Miami. I can see Giannis in LA. Yeah, Giannis will never win one in Milwaukee. Giannis will never do this in Milwaukee. Blah blah. You can't attract free agents in Milwaukee. Yada yada yada. The media wants these superstars to go to major markets because they're lazy shitheads. And they don't know how to create a major market out of a mid-market because it's easier to do it in a major market. It's not hard to grab a superstar and put him in fucking Miami and make him bigger than life. It's easy to do. People would rather do that because they're lazy fucks. They, instead of rather, in, instead of building up a mid-market with that kind of player and bringing the talent there and building that city up, they would rather make it easier on themselves and put that player in a major market so that way they can make X amount of dollars from ratings or whatever the fuck gives me because it's easy. It doesn't take work. It's simple to do. 
Okay, and what does Pat Riley do? He pays attention to the contracts, and I'm going to Pat Riley here. He pays attention to the contracts. What the fuck does he do? He sets himself up for 2022, uh, 2021, right? Do I got that right? 2021, 2022? It doesn't matter. He sets himself up for that year to then sign two big contracts. Why does he do that? Because he knows how this game is played. This game is played as he knows that the Milwaukee Bucks aren't going to attract those big, huge superstars to get the Bucks over the hump. So what does he do? He sets himself up. He drafts really well. He picks up Jimmy Butler. Okay, I'm freeing myself up for two major contracts. And magically, Giannis ends up in Miami. I do need my own work, network, dude. We should be doing our own fucking network. By the way, what's up, Mike? How are you doing, man? You showed up. You're not a coward. I'm, I am proud of you, Mike. He doesn't just go on my timeline and post random nonsense like face because he doesn't have a better insult. Mike has shown up to my stream here and messaged me. Yes, I do need my own network. I should be doing this more often, man. I'm just lazy. But the thing is, though, I want to bring... Here's the thing. If I do this shit, I want to bring you guys with me because I know we all talk. You know, we all talk about this shit all the time. And why aren't we getting our knowledge out there together? You know what I mean? We should bring each other together. That's my thing. If we could bounce off... Like, my thing is, I know if I have Danny and the rest of you guys, we could do it together, man. We could bounce off each other and do this shit. Granted, I would rather use... Yeah, Facebook Live is fine, but I'd rather use Twitch and whatever. Uh, where am I? So, like, let's get into it. Yeah, so that's how this shit works. And it's stupid, and that's why the NBA is so bad. Because they don't... Well, it's not just the NBA. It's sports in general. You gotta understand... Look at the UFC. Okay? It's all about Conor McGregor. If he isn't around, everything implodes. Even though he's lost his last God knows how many fights. Because he's entertaining. Because it's easy. Right? He brings in the numbers. Instead of bringing up the fighter who's dominating and clearly winning and the better fighter, you just want to go off the guy who's more entertaining to bring in ratings. It's lazy. It's lazy. ESPN, you're lazy. Fox Sports, you're lazy. The reason why we have so many fucking mid-market teams is because you're lazy. What's more impressive? Let me tell you something right now. Let me lay out a scenario, okay? Let me lay out a scenario for you, okay? Let's say, for example... Okay, let's say for example, for some reason, I can't I can't shoot or make a three here in Milwaukee for the life of me, right? It's been 20 years. I've shot up 3 million shots, right? I can't hit a three in Milwaukee for some god for some reason. No matter what basketball court I go to, I can't make a three in Milwaukee. Right? Or let's put it like this. I'll, man, I'll do you one better. No one's ever made a three-pointer in Milwaukee. For some reason, it's super difficult here, right? For some reason, no man on the hit, no man on the earth, the best basketball players, cannot hit a three in Milwaukee. But guess what? If you go to Miami, everybody makes a three, right? It's easy. Everybody makes one, right? What's? Let me ask you this. So now that's the scenario. I Nobody on the face of the earth can hit a three in Milwaukee. Miami, everybody hits a three. They make it 100% of the time. Right? When it comes to ratings, what would be more impressive? Me hitting a three in a place where no one has ever hit a three-pointer. Granted, this is totally unrealistic, but I'm trying to make a point. What's more impressive? What's going to bring in more ratings? Me stopping sh me stopping to shoot a three here in Milwaukee just to go to Miami to make one. Or me figuring it out and making the three here. The answer should be me making a three in Milwaukee because it's never been done before. That's where your ratings are. Because it's not easy to do. It's hard. 
Do you get it? That's where the ratings is. Not for a cheap pop. You want a you want a championship here in Milwaukee because it hasn't been done in damn near 40 years. That's where the ratings are. Not going to Miami where we just saw the Heatles win championships. The Milwaukee Bucks haven't won a championship since Luol Cinder, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and Oscar Robinson was here in the 70s. But ESPN will tell you they would rather have Giannis in Miami winning one. For some reason, that would bring in more ratings. Because it's Miami. Not history. I just... I don't know, man. I don't. I don't know what else. I don't know what else to say. I mean, I've. I've. I don't know what else to say. I mean, it's just. It. It's frustrating, guys. I'm at. I'm at my. I, I just. And you know what, man? I want to chalk it up to, hey, man, it's COVID, weird playoff scenario. But I mean, other teams are playing well. The Lakers are playing well. Houston's playing well. Every other team is playing well. Bucks came in, played the Heat, didn't play too well. It sucks. I just, it's disappointing. It's disappointing. It really is. Um, the only thing the Bucks could do in the off season now. Let's get to the off season. Um, there's two things the Bucks can do to to help this situation and make it better. Um, I think what they need to do personally is um. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I do make more sense to Stephen A. Smith. Stephen A. Smith sucks. I'm sorry. All he is is a character. And he could tell anybody that. I don't care. Stephen A. Smith is a character. He's not... A, uh, look, he might he might have played basketball more than I have. He might have watched more basketball than I have when it comes to knowledge about sports and watching it. I think I'm better than him. Um, what was I saying? So, yeah, I mean, the only thing the Bucks can do this offseason to remedy this issue... They need to find a way to make a splash in free agency. Not in free agency, but they need to find a way to make a splash. Uh, well, whatever. I mean, trade deadline, free agency. I mean, Chris Paul, if you can find a way to land Chris Paul. I mean, the Oklahoma City Thunder just fired Billy Donovan today. So they might be in full rebuild now. I mean, I don't think the Oklahoma City Thunder expected to be the fifth seed in the West or whatever it was. Um, if I got that wrong, I'm sorry. But I don't think anybody expected the Oklahoma City to make the playoffs. I think everybody expected them to be one of the worst teams in the league. Uh, they just fired Billy Donovan. Um, and I think what you do is you need to... I think the Bucks should make a move for Chris Paul. See if he's available. If you cannot get Chris Paul, the only other move they can make logically... Is getting Bradley Beal, and I don't know how about you. I don't know what you guys feel about that. With, with anybody in the chat who's still watching, uh, Mike or Orrin, uh, I don't know how you guys feel about those moves right there. I feel like, I feel like those two moves there. If you can get both, cool, not possible. But if you can get one of those guys, I think getting a Chris Paul here, because the the, the problem with the Bucks now too is this. They lost their ball handler in Michael in Malcolm Brogdon. Um, signing signing Eric Bledsoe to that contract was ridiculous. Uh, my buddy uh, or Danny on Twitter, he can vouch for me on this. I said trade Eric Bledsoe a year ago when he was in the last year of his contract. I said trade him and sign Malcolm Brogdon because Malcolm Brogdon is a smarter point guard. You need a guy who can handle the basketball. Who makes smart decisions? Eric Bledsoe's a good basketball player. The problem is he's a two guard. Okay? He's a two playing a one. He's a two playing a one. That's what he is. And he takes bad shots. He makes bad decisions. He does not make the right basketball play with the, ba- with the, with the basketball. Malcolm Brogdon did that. If we had Malcolm Brogdon in this series, this would be different. The Bucks win this series. Period. 
I don't care what anybody says. If Malcolm Brockton is here, the Bucks win this series pretty easily. Okay. Um. Well, I mean, yeah, I I think they win this series pretty. I still think it'd be a six to seven game series, but I think the Bucks will probably probably win it handily. Uh but yeah, I mean, the, the only moves that Bucks can make to make this right is getting Bradley Beal. Is getting Chris Paul. I mean, that's it. There's no other moves on the board, guys. I mean, this is it. This is make or break next year for the Bucks. And I, I, I want to be hopeful. The only thing I'm hope, the only thing that I, the only reason why that I feel like they can do this is because the the ownership here for the Milwaukee Bucks. Okay, the ownership here for the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, these guys are billionaires. Um. They they make moves, dude. They make splashes. They will spend the money. Okay, they replaced Jason Kidd out of nowhere. They okay. Here's the thing: what they did when they first got here, Larry Drew was the coach. They went and replaced Larry Drew with Jason Kidd their first year here as the owners. Okay, out of nowhere after Larry Drew signed like a multi year contract. Okay, so these guys aren't afraid to move on from things. Okay, they're not afraid to do that. All right. So that's why I'm hopeful that I think they'll make a splash in the offseason. I think they understand what's on the table. I think they understand, listen, I got a year to do this. Okay, I got a year to do this. Giannis is in a contract year. He's my bread and butter. He's my money maker. I need to make it, this team as good as possible to win the Eastern Conference and win this fucking championship next year. Um, And personally, I think... If you can land Bradley Beal and somehow land Austin Rivers from Houston. Uh, Austin Rivers is a free, free agent as well. I don't know if he leaves Houston. I don't think he does. But that it, this is wishful thinking. But I think if they could retool that bench, I think Austin Rivers would be a nice addition to this Bucks team. Way better than Kyle Corvus, bitch ass. And um, put Austin Rivers in that lineup, I think, with a Chris Paul... I would love to go Bradley Beal because he's younger. Chris Paul has his injury issues. But you know what? Chris Paul played pretty well this year. Um, I would rather have him handling the basketball, though, than Bradley Beal. Because I think we need a ball handler more than another scorer. I need a guy who's going to make good decisions. I think him setting up Middleton and Giannis for shots would make this team very, 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 very good next year. Uh, in the long term, uh, it, it, I mean, it, this is just for next year, right? Um, I think Chris, I think it's one of those two guys, dude, you know, and I think you can not give up a lot for Chris Paul because I think Oklahoma's just going to want to unload him because they're like, dude, we're trying to rebuild, right? Um, Brooks would be great with Beal. I agree. Uh, Brogdon would have been a lot better than Bledsoe. Absolutely. I mean, I said it, I don't understand why they, they signed Eric Bledsoe and not, keep Malcolm Brogdon I just don't get it I I just don't understand it you you, at point guard you need a guy who's smart with the basketball you need a guy who's willing to set other people up you don't need another scorer It, it doesn't work it just doesn't work if you're a fucking point guard your job is to set other people up and maybe get you some points okay your object should be to set up the offense I don't think Eric Bledsoe's good at doing that. I think the problem is that responsibility goes to Giannis sometimes, and he's not a fucking point guard. At best, Giannis is a five. Okay, five or four. And, you know, he's not a point guard. He's not a point forward like LeBron. He's not. Uh, you need a guy who's going to set up this offense up, and I just don't understand. I just don't get it. what their fucking thinking is. I just don't. It is what it is. We're here. We got to fix it. Okay, that's the point. We got to fix it. They're here. These decisions are made. We just got to find out how to fix it. I think those two decisions would fix this issue going into next year. And I think if th- the thing is, is this the Bucks need to win the chip. Can we? The Bucks need to win the chip next year to keep Giannis. Are we all in agreement on that? Are we all in agreement on that? I, I think we all, I think we can, I think we can all agree to that. Period. I think this is championship or bust next year, guys. And uh, if they don't win a championship, well, I'm going to be miserable watching basketball for the next 25 years or so here in Wisconsin. 
I, I think at that point, I think if Giannis leaves, I think I'm done with basketball, period. And I've said this a bunch of times. I'm just, I'm sick and tired of fucking mid-market teams being farming systems for the major markets. This is bullshit. It's terrible. I mean, I, I, I hate. The other thing is, too, I love how the NBA, what they do is, hey, you know how to keep your players? You offer more money. But they're still not taking more money, and they're still going to major markets to dominate with super teams. Yeah, good job, NBA. You still haven't fucking figured it out. You're a joke. The NBA is a joke. Adam Silver's a joke. It's all a joke. Yeah, Brogdon was a 54-90 guy with great guard defense, and they let him go. And I don't... Yeah, they let him go. And you can go to my post about it from last year. I posted about it last year. I said it was a terrible decision. That's that's uh, one way to lose Giannis, was that, in my opinion. Um, and not sign, re-signing Brogdon. I don't get it. I don't understand why they didn't re-sign him. I don't know why they didn't give him any money. I don't get it. I don't know. It's a bad choice, bad decision. And it sucks. Because you had a guy like that. You could have kept him. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds... And this isn't any... This is not to compare uh, 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 James Harden and Malcolm Brogdon. By the way, James Harden's a way better player than Brogdon. I, that's not... I'm not comparing it. Skill player wise, I'm comparing the situation. Do you remember when I? Do you remember when I was in Florida for that? Uh, when the Heat beat OKC, do you remember us having that conversation? It was between Serge Ibaka and James Harden. I swear, I said keep James Harden because you can find another seven footer. And I don't think I think Mike and somebody else disagreed with me that they should have kept Serge Ibaka. And I was like, I think that's a terrible decision. And look what that's done. This is comparable to Malcolm Brogdon and Eric Bledsoe, right? Do you want to keep the guy who's a 40, 50, 90 guy, who's a smart basketball player, who understands how to set up the offense and move the basketball? Do you want that or do you want a two guard who's playing the one handling your basketball? That's never... The only two guard that plays that way that's been successful, kind well, not kind of, has been Steph Curry, and that's because Steph Curry's in a you know he I mean he's got Clay Thompson, he had you know Jay, Draymond Green, great system and great role players around him, you know, um, and he ended up winning multiple championships. But they get they ended up getting KD, and you know you know that story already. Um, that's why Steph Curry uh, was was super successful in Golden State. Um, man, I just, dude, I'm so defeated. You know, I listen. I, you can poke fun at me all day saying I'm a fair weather Bucks fan, but this one hurts, man, because we finally got a fucking transcendent player. We can't get over the hump in the Eastern Conference, in the weakest conference in the NBA. And it's not to say that the Heat are a weak team. Okay, let's just put it. Let's just. Let's put it like this. How about this? I'll go on a limb and say this. If the Milwaukee Bucks played the Dallas Mavericks round one, I would. if they played the same way against the Miami Heat, I would take the Dallas Mavericks round one over the Bucks if they fucking played that way. I would take, dude, Utah. If they played Utah that way in round one or round two, I would take Utah. That's where I'm at with this. You understand? That's where I'm at with this. You can disagree with me all you want to, but that's where I'm at with this. Okay? You can't... This is inexcusable. Okay? You can go on and throw out excuses about fucking... This isn't a real playoffs and all that shit. And I've heard that a few times today. I, I don't, that's, not, that's not a viable excuse. Uh, the, the, the Lakers are playing well. The Clippers are playing... Other teams are playing well and up to their standard. The Bucks did not. Period. They played like a team that was not into it. That I mean, I don't know where their defense went when this bubble came back, but it went nowhere, guys. I didn't feel like this is a team that wanted to be here and play in the playoffs. And everybody else is. And everybody else wants a championship. So, I don't know, man. Anyways, hey, uh, any thoughts from you, Oren? What, what are your thoughts on the series, man? Let me know what you think. I mean, uh, how am I spot on? Am I am I wrong in my analysis? Do you disagree? Like, what, what, what do you think? I mean, I, I just... 
I I'm just, I didn't think I'd well one I didn't think I'd be here in September talking about playoff basketball. That's one that's weird. Two I didn't think I'd be here talking about the Bucks being out in the second round. I had the Bucks at least out in the finals. Oh right now check it out. Hold on a minute. I got an alert coming through here. Got a message. Bleacher report. All right, guys, take a look. Bleach Report. This is what I'm just talking about just now. Chris Paul trade rumors. Rivals think Bucks will try to land point guard from Thunder. Let's take a look. The Milwaukee Bucks second round exit against the Miami cannot be classified as anything but a shocking disappointment, even though Giannis had to come to some of the series because of an ankle injury. Bucks fans looking for some type of silver lining might be able to turn their attention toward Chris Paul. According to Mark Stein, the New York Times, some rival teams think the Bucks will explore trading for Chris Paul if the Oklahoma City Thunder like to move the veteran point guard. It may make sense for OKC to trade Paul as it could facilitate a rebuild around younger players such as uh, Shai Gildress, Alexander, and Lugans Dort. Paul is old more than $85 million. That's a lot of That's a lot of money as well. Over the next two seasons, which doesn't fit with a rebuilding team's timeline, as time point out, the Bucks may have trouble matching salaries in a Paul trade, but such a deal could indicate to Anakuma how serious the team is about winning. Yanis is set to become an unrestricted free agent uh, following the 2020-2021 campaign. Losing the franchise cornerstone to another team would be a brutal blow for the Bucks. He's only 25 years old and will likely win the league MVP for the second straight season. As long as he's on the roster, Milwaukee's championship windows open. I agree. Uh, adding Paul would be a significant boost. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Paul can shoot. Okay, I don't, it's just explaining shit that he does, and I don't care about that. I already know what Chris Paul brings to the table. But, yeah, that's coming out from Mark Stein right now. That's coming out from Mark Stein, and, it, this is, and I love this. I love this stuff because people are thinking like me all of a sudden, right? And I'm coming up with, the, you know what I'm saying? I like this. The, the 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 head, the mind is in the to to make this team better. The the mindset is there, right? We just got to execute. Mark Lazary, those guys. If this video ever reaches them, they need to watch what I'm saying and and execute and bring in these guys. All right. So Middleton proved he's a pretty good compliment. Uh, Lopez played real tough. Yeah, I mean. You can't have Marvel Williams playing 20. That's okay. Let's go to the fucking rotation. Let's go to that next. Bootenholzer, what the fuck were you thinking with your rotation? Let's just go to this. My my problem, okay, my issue with George, Jason Kidd years ago, his rotations were shit. And it just continues with Bootenholzer, which I don't fucking understand it. I don't understand why Mike, why Pat Connington, I think a game or two ago, got one minute. Pat Connaughton is a fucking phenomenal player, dude. He's a guts player. He's a guy that just... He's the kind of guy that for some reason... Like, if he doesn't get any points, for some reason he'll have five rebounds, a block, and, and big momentum plays. I don't understand why Pat Connaughton had a minute a, a game or two ago, whenever it was. His rotations have been shit this entire series. And I don't get it. I just don't get it. Let's take a look. At the, let's take a look at the box score. Like I said, I didn't watch this game today. I was out doing jujitsu and Muay Thai. I was trying to stay fit. You know, uh, fluid jujitsu. That's where I go. All right. Anyway, so um, let's look at the men's tonight. Thank God they got this right. Kyle Culver. By the way, can we make that a zero? Kyle Culver. Kyle Culver should not be on any team in the NBA next year. Okay. Period. Kyle Corver should fucking retire just like Marvin Williams. Okay? We don't need you anymore. Nobody, no team in the NBA needs Kyle Corver. Get the fuck out of the NBA. You're, you're too, I'm sorry. He's too old. He can't play defense. He's a liability on, and everything. Tonight, Pat Connaughton got 14 minutes. I would give Pat Connaughton 14 more minutes, uh, six more minutes in this game. Period. Pat Connaughton's a stud. What happened to him? Last year, playing phenomenal. These playoffs, no show. Don't fucking get it. Lopez played a great series, man. I like Rick Lopez. I like Middleton. I, I just, this is the problem right here. Look at this shit. Look at this shit. 36 minutes. I'm trying to highlight this. 36 minutes, 
2 for 12, 1 for 4 for the three-point line, 4 for 6 for the free throw line, 9 points. You're a liability. Uh, this is not good, guys. This is terrible. This is terrible basketball. If you want to... If you're if you're running a JV team or a uh, varsity team in high school or any other uh, level of uh, basketball play, what you do is is that you show Eric Bledsoe stats here, and this is what you don't do in a basketball game. Okay, that's what you don't do. You don't fucking go two for twelve in a fucking game where you're on the verge of being eliminated. I'm pretty sure if I can go back and watch the tape, I'm pretty sure these were all bad shots. These 12 shots were fucking terrible. I guarantee they were all fucking bad and didn't need to be taken. Can guarantee it. Uh, he had 9 assists, I guess. I mean, sure. But 2 for 12, don't do it, buddy. That needs to be more like uh, 7 for 12 or something. Or uh, something better than that. That's not good. If he, I mean, if he scores another 5 shots, Bucks win this game. So... There you go. You got it. Bledsoe's just killing me. Uh, DiVincenzo, I'm a fan of. I like Dante DiVincenzo. Uh, I mean, this is a this is good. You see, look at this. 28. Listen, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. And this is why the plus minus is a joke to me. I don't see a minus eight for DiVincenzo. How was DiVincenzo a minus eight when he scores 17 points on five for nine shooting, three for six from the three point line? Four for five from the free throw line. Two rebounds. I mean, four rebounds, I'm sorry. Uh, a steal. I mean, why is he negative eight? Plus minus. Plus minus is a joke. I don't know how they do the math here. He's not, He wasn't a minus eight on the court. I, I'm sorry. How is this considered minus eight? When this motherfucker played eight more minutes, two for 12. I mean, let's get the math, guys. Let's, do, let's get a calculator. Because you know what? I'm good at math. But my problem is, is I am too lazy to do the math. So here we go. So we're going to divide 2 into 12, and we're going to find out a shooting percentage. I can clearly look it up on the fucking thing here, but I don't want to. He shot 6. If You know what? I'll do him a favor. I'll round up, and I'll say that 17% from the fucking free th from the line. He shot 17%, and he's even. Plus minus is a joke. However you manage that, however you do that math in the NBA, go fuck yourself. Because how does Eric Bledsoe, he's even. Dante DiVincenzo played eight less minutes, five for nine from the field from the field goals, okay? Three for six from the three-point line, four for five from free throws, brought in four fucking rebounds, and he's negative eight? Where the fuck do you get that from? How is Dante DiVincenzo negative eight? Bledsoe's even? So you don't know. He was just there. He was just a guy. He didn't bring down your team or bring him up. He was just there. But DiVincenzo, according to plus minus, was minus eight for some fucking reason. Fuck off. That's gross. But yeah, let's put it like this. Team going forward, Middleton, he proved something to me. Clean this up a little bit. Brooke Lopez, I want to get that guy a championship. He's playing well. Uh, Eric Bledsoe, get the fuck off my team. Wesley Matthews, sure. Uh, DiVincenzo, I'm a big fan of. Marvin Williams, he's retiring anyway, so he's gone. This comes off the board. So this salary comes off the board. George Hill, I'm sorry. You need to go. Um, too long, long in the tooth. We can, we can find some other guys to uh, replace you with. Here's the other thing, too, guys. This is the part of the part I don't understand. Sterling Brown, no minutes. Robin Lopez, didn't play at all in this series. Ersan Ilyasova, didn't play at all in this series. Can somebody explain this to me, why Ersan Ilyasova has not been in any of the lineups? Why the fuck is he on the team? Why aren't you playing your full roster? I just don't understand. I mean, Robin Lopez could come in and give you an energy play or something. Could jolt the team. I just don't understand the rotation. His rotation, but Mike Budholzer's rotations and his adjustments are terrible. He needs to improve that as a coach. He needs to come in the next year and improve his rotations and his adjustments because he lives and dies off his system. And and it's it it even if it goes bad, even if it goes bad, 
he still sticks with it, right? I mean, when the Bucks were down, uh, what 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 when uh Toronto won those two games to tie up the series, I mean, it was still the same Bucks system. They did nothing. Other thing too is, uh, I'm sorry to say this, Giannis Antetokounmpo needs to improve his offensive game. It's too repetitive. We all know he wants to attack the basket at every point he can. Granted, the the problem is he's not the freight train LeBron is. Now, granted, Giannis has the length and the size. I mean, uh, Giannis has the length. He's not as big and built as LeBron is. So you can go ahead and build that wall. LeBron is just a fucking freight train. He's a 260-pound. He's a tight end. So he can dominate the post as much as he wants to. I mean, nobody can body up LeBron. Come on. Giannis is very skinny. He's not very... You know, he's not built like that. What he should do, in my opinion, is he should go in the post and develop a jump hook. I don't know why he hasn't. He has the length. Nobody can defend that shit. He should develop a jump hook in the offseason. Develop a mid, somewhat of a mid-range jumper and work on the three-point shot. Giannis has homework to do, too. Giannis isn't at... Listen, Giannis is not... He deserves some, some criticism, too, Okay. He needs to step up his basketball game. He needs to step up and be a better offensive threat on the field, on the, on the court, period. Giannis does not get a pass in this series, okay? Just like how I give LeBron shit when they, leave his, when they lose the series. Giannis needs to get blamed, too. He needs to step up his game, okay, period. He needs to be a better offensive player, okay? Defensively, nothing to work on. Offensively, I say get a jump hook in that post. And I say, get a nice little mid-range jumper. Okay, don't rely on it. But you know what? Have something. Have them fear you from that, you know, from shooting that shot. And 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 develop a little bit of three-point. It doesn't have to be five a game. It could be three a game. But make two of them. Right? So you got to make people fear you from three. You have to make people fear you from the mid-range. And you have to make people fear you from the post with other moves outside of just driving to the basket. He needs to demand the basketball more when he's in the post and and just jump hook that shit. Okay, that's what Giannis needs to do in the offseason. His homework is to develop his offensive game and get it better. Okay? He's not... He's not... Because here's the thing. Let's put it like this, Orn. If Giannis goes to Miami, okay, if if he stays the same player, Granted, you have better talent, but you'll be just as frustrated as me. Because he his free throw percentage isn't good. His post game is all right. He's getting off athleticism. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you. He's worse than 2007 LeBron. Do you know why he's worse than 2007 LeBron? You want to take a stab at it? Giannis is... And this is not... Okay. When I say Giannis is worse than 2007 LeBron, I'm not saying that he's like grossly worse than LeBron. I'm saying worse because at least LeBron in 2007, his offensive game was a little bit more polished than Giannis right now. Giannis's offensive game is is and I said this to Danny the other day. Giannis's offensive game is very similar to Derrick Rose. Okay? And what I mean by that, I mean by early Derrick Rose. I'm not talking about late Derrick Rose. I'm talking about early Derrick Rose when he would just it was pure athleticism, right? With Giannis, it's pure athleticism and it's like that gets you only so far. Pure athleticism gets you so far. At least LeBron understood that yeah, I'm an athlete. And I need to even the thing is with LeBron in 2007 is he never had the greatest jumper, right? But it was serviceable. You understand? LeBron's jumper is serviceable in 2007. His three-point shot is serviceable. Giannis's three-point shot and jumper is not serviceable at all. He cannot live and die off that, right? That's why I say He's worse than LeBron in 2007. Okay. Giannis doesn't have a jumper to go to. Giannis doesn't have a three point shot to go to. He has his athleticism and he has his just, just dunking and, you know, layups and stuff. 
which is fine. But my thing is, like I said, he's not built like LeBron. You understand? Like there's a difference. LeBron's a freight train, okay? He can dominate the post all he wants because of how big he is. He's massive. He's a massive human being. Nobody can body him, okay? People can body Giannis. He's very lanky. He's very skinny, okay? So um, it, 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 that's why I say that, okay? Um, he can win a time in the regular season games but can't win in postseason when game slows down. No, I think he can win when it slows down. The problem is... Because you got to understand, the Bucks, they don't play. Granted, you got to understand, they played the whole analytics game, right? With making threes and everything. But the, the Bucks play defense. They can play a slower pace game. The problem is, is, is Giannis doesn't adjust to it. You understand? If he needs to go to, if he needs to go into his tool belt to do something different offensively, he, he right now he can't do it. Okay. It's because he, he, he his jumper's not it's not good and that's what kills me. He had all he had all this okay, let's put it like this, okay? He had an entire off season. Okay. And he had from March till July to get in the gym and work on his offensive game. We didn't see that at all when we got to the bubble. Okay, and this is my thing, right? At that point, do I blame the coach for not telling Giannis to develop his game more? Or is that on Giannis not doing that? It's tough at that point because if I'm a player... I mean, in anything in life, right? I mean, you're you're a poker dealer. Anything in life, if you're not, if you're constantly, if if there's, if you have an issue dealing the cards or whatever it is, whatever it is, you know, hey, you're you're a poker dealer. You have an issue with the way you deal cards, or something, whatever, you know. Um, you don't do the flops accordingly when it comes to Texas Hold'em, something. And other people are calling it out, but you don't see it. And you don't make the adjustments. And you don't make the changes. Whose fault is that at that point? Is it your boss? Or is it you? If people are telling you're not doing something very well. And you don't respond. And you don't adjust. Whose fault is that? It's on you. It's accountability. And what Giannis needs to do in the offseason is be accountable. Because you can't win playoff games like this. You have to develop your game. And you have to give people different looks. You have to scare people in other ways. You have to adjust. You have to make them fear you from everywhere. Right? It's not just about slowing down the game. The Bucks can play a slow game. They're actually built for that. Right? They're not built like Houston where they have to run up and down the court. Granted, they, they shoot threes and move the basketball, but they're built they can they can play a slow place game. They have the defense to do it. They're the best def, they're the best defense in the league. Statistically. They were the best defense in the league. So I I, I mean I, I get what you're saying, but I, I I, I I think it's more of accountability in Giannis. He needs to step up his game. But like I said to you, if Giannis goes to Miami and plays the same way, yeah, you might win a championship with because just because the team's around you. But he is he going to miss those big free throws in the in the finals? Is he going to miss those in the Eastern Conference Finals? Is he going to miss them in the second round? If he doesn't improve that, the, my thing is, is going to another location doesn't improve that. What improves your basketball game is you making the adjustments and holding yourself accountable. That's how you improve. You need to be accountable. 
going somewhere else does not improve that. It just doesn't. Now, granted, if the coach isn't saying these things, and let's just say the difference is Eric Spolstra is willing to say that, then sure. Okay, cool. You go to Miami and you make those improvements and you get better. That's fine. But that's not a guarantee. All right? So just just something to think about. Okay? He has not improved in these past three playoffs years. He has not improved his offensive game, guys. Granted, he's 25 years old. He has a lot of years left in him, okay? Giannis has a lot of time left in him. He has way more than enough time to improve his offensive repertoire. But he needs to improve it now. We need next year. We need to see Giannis attacking the bat, attacking offensively different next year. We need to see him hit hit a few jumpers, make some free throws. His free throws are just atrocious. He's worse than LeBron. I didn't think I'll ever say that for a superstar. He's worse than LeBron James shooting free throws. It's bad. I mean, I've never. I mean, he airballs free throws. That's he that that's worse. He airballs them. Okay. And I'm only comparing him to superstars, not like me. I can't hit those for I'm not a basketball player. But I'm talking about superstars. I've not seen superstars airball free throws. Okay. So I don't know, man. So right now, just I guess in a wrap up here. Because I've gone on, holy shit, I've gone on for almost an hour, guys. Whoa. Granted, I have one person watching me right now, but whatever. Um, I got a recording. I'll probably have this on my YouTube at some point, uh, my YouTube channel, and I'll get it out there see what happens. Um, This is fun. I mean, granted, I'm, I'm a little sad, a little so- somber tonight uh, because the Bucks lose this series, and this is heartbreaking. Um, this sucks. Um, it's not a good feeling. Um, cause it, this could be the beginning of the end for us having a superstar here and that sucks. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, man, in a wrap up all in all, um, this is, this is a disappointing buck season. Um, I'm not going to sugarcoat it any worse. This is disappointing. Um, I'm not going to make any excuses. I'm going to hold them to the same standard as I do LeBron. Okay. As I do any other superstar, uh, Giannis needed to show up in the series. Granted, he just needed to do more. I mean, you can go off those other games. I mean, the big mistake against Jimmy Butler. Granted, we can. There was a lot of shitty calls in that game too, right? Okay, but you he should know better not to put a hand on Jimmy Butler. Okay, um, it is what it is. They called it. He made it through free throws. From there, the Heat won the series, and it is what it is. Uh, this is a disappointing season. Uh, a lot of. I mean, Giannis does deserve some blame here. Uh, Boone Hoser deserves some blame here. Front office, I mean, the entire he, the entire Milwaukee Bucks organization deserves a lot of blame for this series loss. Um, and they they need to do better. Okay, they need to do better. They can do better. They need to execute next year. Okay, and in the off season, I expect to see a lot of movement. I expect to see a lot of changes being made because the goal next year. Oh, why can't Giannis take advantage in the paint against smaller defenders? I don't know. That's a good question. Why can't uh, Giannis take advantage in the paint against smaller I don't know. I, for the life of me, I don't understand why he doesn't go on the post and demand the basketball against smaller defenders. I don't get it. Maybe he's just not confident in, 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 in his post moves. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, Giannis seems more to me where he's more effective is like on the move with the basketball, right? If you watch, if you watch a lot of uh, the Bucks games, he seems like he feels better with the basketball in his hands and just uh, just moving that way and creating a basket in the post rather than you know how LeBron does it now. Like LeBron, what he does is now he just takes your four, whoever your four is, whoever small is defending him, he'll force a bad matchup in the post, demand a basketball. And then just dominate. Doesn't matter who it is. I don't know. I just think I just I just don't think Giannis is confident in his post move. I think that's what it is. 
I, I can't. I don't have an answer for that. I don't know why he doesn't defend smaller people in the post. Again, a jump hook would a jump hook would uh, would 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 do it. In my opinion, a jump hook would do it. In my eyes, um, anything. I mean, just develop a post game. I don't know. But I think that's something. Again, this has this has a lot to go with him working on that, right? This comes on to him. Oh yeah, but I but see but but see but Orin, I don't disagree with you. I I right now he's saying he is pre Miami LeBron. I, I don't disagree. Yeah, no, I don't disagree. LeBron didn't have much of a post game either. He tried to dominate with his jumper, which wasn't good. It got better. But what he needed to understand was I'm the bigger player. I should be dominating the post. Duh. Um, that's what Giannis needs to do. I think personally, what Giannis needs to improve is his jump, his mid range jumper. He needs he needs a mid range jumper for a guy his size. He should have something su- to suffice for mid range. Um, he has the length for a jump hook. I keep saying this. He has he has the length for a jump hook. It should be really easy for him. Um. But the reason why I say he's worse is because, I mean, he shoots a worse free throw person. Let's just get into it. Outside of Giannis killing the post, where does Giannis kill you offensively? Think about it. Has Giannis ever killed somebody from three? Has Giannis ever killed somebody from the mid-range? That's why he's worse than LeBron. Pre-Miami. Because he just doesn't do any of those things. Okay. Well, at least with LeBron, he could somewhat kill you with a jumper. He could somewhat kill you from three. Not all the time. But he can do it, right? Not just that. LeBron can affect the game with playmaking and all that. You understand, LeBron is... LeBron's a point guard in a par for its body, right? So he he's very smart with the basketball. He understands where to put the ball and all that stuff. Giannis is not that guy, okay? Giannis is not a point forward, okay? He's just not. Um, but yeah, holy shit. Houston and LA is tied right now. Oof, that's interesting. Yeah, LeBron and post. Yeah, he developed it. And then once he developed that post game, what happened? He started shooting above 50%, right? Hmm. Interesting, right? All right, man. Uh, I think I'm going to call it, man. I'm a little tired. Um, I, well, I've gone on for an hour and four minutes here. I pretty much have this recorded. Um, I'll probably get it on my YouTube at some point. Um, but, yeah, man, I want to do this more, man. I really want to get you guys involved in this stuff, man. I want to do this more. I think we could. I love talk. I love talking sports, man, in general. And with, with you guys, I know we can do well, right? I mean, I know we talk a lot of outlandish shit, but I think we'll make it a lot more entertaining. I think uh, there's an untapped market for uh, guys that are, you know, major market sports people that are uh, doing this stuff on YouTube. You know what I mean? There's a few guys out there, but they're not. Come on, I mean, they're not doing it to this level, right? So. Or any level. I'm not doing any level. I'm just saying, like, we could... I think we could take it to the next level, right? But anyway, um... Yeah, man, thank you, man. I appreciate it, man. I'll, I'm out of here. Uh, I'm gonna have a good night. I'm gonna take care. Uh, Bucks lose the series. Disappointing season. We'll see what happens next year. I hope for the best. Um... Let's see what happens, guys. I don't know. Uh, but anyways, you guys take care. Have a good one. Have a blessed day. Man, be safe out there. Uh, don't get COVID. Uh, don't do anything fucking stupid. And um, you guys have a good night, all right? You take care.